Shu Kwamuna and Shu Malaya were a pair of deities introduced to Mesopotamia during the Kassite dynasty of Babylonia. They had a close association with the royal family. The pair of gods are referred to as the gods of the king, Ilu Shashari, with Shu Kwamuna being the king's god, Il Shari, and Shu Malia, his patron goddess, Lamasai Shari. Shu Kwamuna and Shu Malia are the only Kassite gods known to be referenced outside of theophoric personal names and some poorly preserved glossaries, and they are the only ones to consistently receive a divine determinative. The sign would be Dingir, the letter D derived from An, which in turn is derived from the Sumerian star symbol. A theophoric name literally means bearing or carrying a god. The practice embeds the name of a god by both invoking and displaying the protection of that deity. For example, names embedding Apollo such as Apollonios or Apollodorus, existing in Greek antiquity. This would mean the modified names are cleverly disguised magic spells. While no archaeological or historical evidence exists for the construction of any temples to Kassite gods in Babylonia, or their integration into mainstream Babylonian religion. Shukwamuna and Shumalea appear in several historical texts, inscriptions and theophoric names, mostly from the Middle Kassite period. They were represented iconographically by a bird on a high perch, a symbol which often appeared on Kuduru stones, the basalt boundary stones. Despite their importance to the ruling dynasty, neither of these deities appear in the names of any Kassite kings or in Babylonian god lists and they are not mentioned in any of the known inscriptions left by Kassite rulers on their building projects. But I remind you, they are the gods of the king, not of the people. The king's gods were worshipped behind closed doors, but also in plain sight. Agum Kakrimi, a king of 16th century Babylon, describes himself as being of the pure seed of Shu Kwamuna. In an inscription known from two late copies at Nineveh, in the same inscription, Agum claimed to be king of Babylon by the will of the major Babylonian gods. Therefore, using his descent from Shukwamuna to mark himself as king outside the traditional Babylonian aristocracy, while fully integrating himself into the religious system. Likewise, Kurigalzu the first claimed to have the support of all the gods in his empire, but maintained Shu Kwamuna and Shu Malaya 
as his personal deities. Text MAH 15922 from the reign of Kurigal Zhu centers on the role of Shu Kwamuna and Shu Malia. In kingship, the two gods exalt him during his accession and grant him the rights of kingship. Here, as in a fragment from Bogoskoi, they are referred to as Ilu Banu, the Begetta Gods. This text also refers to a temple of Shumalaya and Shukwamuna, the Great Gods, though this may have been a cultic room or shrine, rather than an independent temple building. This marked a departure from the tradition of the investiture at the Temple of Enlil. As the new dynastic gods now conferred kingship upon Babylon's rulers, bringing this source of legitimacy under palace control. However, the Kassite kings certainly did not reject Enlil as a major deity. The word voice, Gu, is cognate with Ku, and with Ku, which was used in royal inscriptions. And when Kurigalzu founded his new capital of Kur Durigalzu, he chose Enlil as its patron deity, and erected a large ziggurat there in his honor. Further evidence for the importance of Enlil to Kassite kings comes from the many dedicatory inscriptions they made to Enlil, and their choice to use the title Governor of Enlil. On a 13th century Dukuru stone, erected by Nazi Murutash, Shukwamuna and Shumalia appear as part of a formulaic curse inscription. Their names come from those of many of the major Babylonian gods such as Anu, Enlil, and Ishtar. In column 4, lines 21 to 23, they are described as Shukwamuna and Shumalaya, the gods who love each other, Ilanu Murtamu. Theophoric personal names in the Kassite period did sometimes include Shukwamuna, there are twelve cases, the Zodiac, and Shumalia, three cases, the Three Sisters. These frequencies are much lower than that of another Kassite divine name, Sa, a total of forty-three cases, seven. There are also 43 variants of the name Malak, the Angel of the Lord, which would also be defined as an invoking text. However, unlike Sa, or any of the other Kassite divine names, theophoric names for Shu Kwamuna and Shu Malaya use the divine determinative. In a Kassite Akkadian glossary of names post-dating the reign of Shagarakiti Shuryash, Shukwamuna is glossed 
as both Nergal and Nusku on the same line. Nusku is the vizier, the banker. In the same text, Shumalia is written as Shumalia in Akkadian, but as Shugura in Kassite. The viziers to the king would be the only ones with authority to change the name. Nusku is the vizier, the watcher, the banker of Nergal. Occasional references to Shukwamuna and Shumalia continue to appear after the end of the dynasty. The Empire's name dies, but the gods do not, and I guarantee they will be reformed by the middle of the next kingdom period. Akuduru stone, from the reign of Nebuchadnezzar I in the 12th century BC, mentions Shumalia as the lady of the bright mountains, who dwells upon the summit, who treads beside the springs. The Ashur Babylon, a text of Ashur Haddon, found in a set of clay tablets from Nineveh, describes how he restored several protective deities to their sanctuaries, including the gods, Hom Humaya, Shu Kwamuna, and Shimalia, to Sipa Aruru in the 7th century BC. Shu Kwamuna, Hom Baba, Dilem Baba, the oldest name on record for Sin, the moon god, Suen, Lord Zu, leading me to finish on Marduk as the container, a small late Babylonian god list, CT 2450, refers to Shu Kwamuna as Marutuk. Sharpisha and Nu, meaning Marduk the container, a container for some thing.